text me and I'll text you back. Text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. Tick tock, you don't stop. I will help you make your paper stack. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at now? Two o five nine six four five two four three nine. You know. Two o five nine six four five two four three nine. You know. Good afternoon, and is there too much competition in your city is today's topic for this daily live. Uh, hi, my name is Ty. <laughs> what is yours? But we're here to talk about real estate investing with a strong emphasis on wholesaling real estate where your cash or credit really doesn't matter. So if you have the free information on how to do it, what is the excuse? There shouldn't be none because we're here to answer questions. Plus, I provide all the information free right here on my YouTube channel. But we're live on TikTok, Instagram, um, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. A lot of T's in there. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, with that being said, um, if, if you want to feel special today and you want to cut the line like your VIP, that's what we need to talk about. The VIP line, mm -hmm. text the word Gator, right? And it will get you on the live stream. And you can not only ask one question that'll get answered by me, you can get multiple questions answered. So text the word Gator right now to join us live on the stream, okay? Uh, while we're waiting for questions to uh, load, if you wanna partner with me on multifamily or mainly self-storage, which, um, Rural areas are in play with these. Text the word units to the number. Um, on houses, if you want to partner with me, just you got these laid out beautifully. You want to take, I'm trying to keep Morgan out. If you want to <laughs> join me on um, uh, houses, just text 5050 to the number and we'll see how we can get down on that, right? And um, what else we got? The magical document. This is what gives you your superpower the contract uh, along with control. The contract that I've been using since 2003, been given it away to thousands of individuals since uh, 2008 is yours. Just text the word contract, boom. Um, if you need training on how to use the tool, one of the tools, one of the tools that we use on a daily basis, text the word tool, but to get it, number one, to get the training, for it, text the word time and we'll personally train you. One of the team members here will train you on it. Okay. And so I think that's enough of that for right now. We'll get to some of the other stuff in a minute here with my cue cards. <laughs> Hate to be elementary here, but simplicity seems to always work, Oksana, because it'll hit so many levels of. You didn't help me. You pulled that it like you know, you know where I'm going with you pulled it like filled in the word, but you didn't, so I had to go with something. Oh, blank. Anyway. All right, everyone is saying hello. What's up, big boss? What's up, flip man? Um, what's happening? What you want to happen? What's up, bro? Someone said we live, baby. We love live, the baby. live shows. Like that. Um I get inspired a lot. You all guys know. When I hear some good stuff, I really get inspired. We live, baby. They used to somebody used to say that on a video. It went viral. Oh, no, they did. We mm -hmm. live, baby. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. First question came from uh Lord Will Lewis on YouTube. They said, Have you tried Flipster? Mm, I'm familiar with I think that's Jerry's Jerry Norton. I think that's his deal. I'm familiar familiar with it, but you know, I'm um partner with uh Batch lead, prop stream, those outfits as far as who I'm affiliated with. So I'm going to push those, but then you know why. All right. This one came from Sarah B. She said, hey, Flipman, do you have a contract for commercial property? Sarah is a regular. She is. I'm glad you join us every day, Sarah. Um, um, that's why it's important we do it at the right at, on, on time, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, people, yeah. For the most part, we do. Yeah, we do. We, 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 we're in a window. Ain't nobody yeah. doing it. We're just, just free. We're in a window. Um, so, um, 
So I don't have one that I give away like I do with the uh, residential, uh, mainly because commercial contracts, uh, it's going to be hard to do one one page on that, right? Uh, and it's just so many different types of commercial properties that it's just not one contract. Um, just be mindful when you're doing those. Um, whereas with houses, you know, you may be the only investor-minded person between you and the seller. Whereas with on commercial, everybody's investor-minded, and um, you know, you just need to make sure that you have something. It doesn't have to be the long 13-page contract or whatever, depending on the property type. But uh, in those situations, um, Google definitely is your friend. Go with something that you understand. Um, and if you don't know a term, you know, research it. You know, you'll, you're going to learn a lot by doing that. So, um, but to answer your question, I don't have one that I give away. Oh, she said she'd be at work watching. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. They are literally paying you. Sorry. To, to, I know to train yourself on your side hustle. It's gonna be your main deal. That is lovely. Uh oh my girl Sarah. Mm -hmm. That is lovely. All right. Um, this one says, Hey Footman and friends, hope you had a wonderful Valentine's Day Sydney. yesterday. Sydney. Yeah. What did you do for Valentine's Day? Absolutely. Okay. Let's see. Uh, this one says, do you have a deal I can work with, work on with you? Mm, that's interesting, Walter. <laughs> no, we, we got plenty of hands around here to help. Um, fortunately, not not currently. That make that make a change. Okay. Um, let's see. You can send us some deals though. Uh text the word units. Hey, I'll send you the script on what to say and everything. This one came from Facebook. They said, how much should a 0 0.39 acres of land cost or be sold for? That would be like saying, <laughs> what would houses cost in XYZ zip code? Yeah. There's no way to know that. It's not enough information on um, Facebook users. It is, it's not that simple. All right. This one came from Brownstone Property Investing on you, no, on Instagram. Sorry. They said, how do you best utilize the lead manager and is it a must to use one? Well, ideally, um, it, it's just going to be your process. The old pen and paper still work, right? Or a Google Sheet will still work. It's just, you know, you got CRMs, uh, customer relationship management systems mm -hmm. um, that we offer. That we offer one. Um, it just to make it a little easier, you know. There's still some, you know, a, bu a, a, a buggy. Is it a buggy carriage in a horse or just a buggy in a horse? Y'all know what I'm trying to say. A horse will still work. It will still transport you, transport you to different locations. Not transport. I said a horse. So I might well say <laughs> a horse will still transport, uh, um, transport you to different locations, but. A car might can get you there faster, and a plane might can get you there even faster, depending on the distance. So, technology, man. All right. Um, this one came from Instagram. Also, they said, "I just downloaded your book, but I haven't read it yet. Can you go through a brief overview of the whole process, please?" Of wholesaling. Mm -hmm. Can I go through a, the brief process of wholesaling? Well, um, <laughs> real estate investing, most people think you need a lot of money or really great credit, a combination of the, the two to get involved in real estate invest, investing, right? You have people that are worth millions of dollars, in some situations, billions, that still think that, right? But little old me and others know differently that if you can find a great real estate deal, the money is secondary. The money will beg you. People will beg you to allow them to take advantage or to purchase that piece of real estate. That's basically all you're doing. You're finding a great real estate deal. We're talking about houses here mainly. You're placing it under contract. That's the purchase and sales agreement. All real estate transactions start with that. 
basically saying you're going to buy it and they're going to sell it. Some more terms there, obviously. That doesn't give you ownership of the property, but it does give you some temporary interest within the property that may have some value if it's a great deal. Okay, so you have people out there with money, believe it or not, cash, money, or access to it, or they have access to resources quickly, money, right, to purchase things, namely real estate. They will pay you a fee to basically say, hey, let me take your position to buy this property. That fee is called an assignment fee. So you basically will be assigning your rights over to someone that does have the resources to buy the house, whether you have resources or not. And they will pay you sometimes a four, five, six, seven figure fee. There's no limit on it, depending on the property. That's basically what you're about to learn. It's basically how to make money on a technique, whether you have the money or you don't, or you have great credit or you don't. Was that a good explanation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your approval, Oksana. <laughs> okay. Um, this one came from TikTok. Um, they have two questions. They said, how much for a phone call with you? And also, how long did it take for you to learn wholesaling? Oh, 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 oh. I love them questions. Mm -mm 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 -mm. See, y'all giving them the big head now. What? Huh? <laughs> you mean a bigger head? <laughs> a bigger head? Um, I don't have an option for a phone call. It, it, it wouldn't, well, I guess they, someone could always make it worth my time. I, I don't know what that number would be. So for number one, let's identify how long the phone call would be, Jessica. Uh, On the end of my, end of my, end of my. I would say 30 minutes. So what would 30 minutes be worth to me? You know, you know how I get that. You out. expensive. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm gonna be honest. If it's not gonna be a good amount of money, you ain't gonna even do that. So the, I don't want to make it seem like you mean, but it's like you be busy and people call you literally all day. I don't know if y'all have ever experienced your phone literally ringing all day, back to back, all day. It's probably not ringing the most when we're on live, but as soon as we get off live, somebody gonna call people, you. I guess they know, huh? Yeah. Okay. So, so, so how much, Jesse? Jesse, from they come up with this number. Mm. So, what, what do you think? I, what, what, just knowing me, you, a thousand and up. You about right. Yeah. You about right. A thousand and up, cause you busy, yeah. and you talking to other people on the phone who are already paying you more than that. Yeah. For deals and work and stuff. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You about right. Okay, so oh, the second part of the question: How how long did it take me to learn wholesaling? Mm -hmm. Really, um, I I bought a course maybe about mm, I received it probably the first or second week. It, it took me three weeks. Well, now wholesaling, I probably got it in a, a couple of days. It's just the course package that I purchased. I didn't know anything about real estate. When I say I did not know anything about real estate, you're talking about someone that didn't know what credit score you would need, um, what they look at to finance you, how much money you would have down. I, I didn't know anything about it, like literally nothing about real estate, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so I, but the course package that I received talked about uh, wholesaling, lease options fix and flip rental properties owner financing such as subject to which the lease options i guess would be uh, down that line all i went from not knowing anything about it to consuming all of this information and in all of these different forms of uh, uh of uh, making money with real estate basically with no money so in reality it took me three weeks to go through all of that but the wholesaling part of it maybe a day or two I really could have stopped then. So I really had a general understanding of it in a day or two in reality. Um, that there wasn't anything that existed that I was aware of, like what, I, you know, the platform that I have here on YouTube. I'm not the only one in, in, uh, on here by no means, but I, I don't know about anyone else's platform, but I'm, I know I give it all away 
on my YouTube channel. So that didn't exist. I paid $400 for that information. It was a bootleg copy of a course package that cost $1,500. But you know, $400 at that time was still a, a tremendous sacrifice. Something didn't get paid, not sure what, something didn't get paid that month. But that's $400. I, I could never make another investment of that type and 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 get the return that I'm well, I guess you could in crypto or something, but anyway. Yeah. That's winning the lottery for me. Well, for me it is anyway. So um, but yeah, so to answer the question. So I guess we answer both of them. Mm -hmm. All right. This one came from Devin's World on YouTube. He said, How do you convince a motivated seller who has a property but is already working with a real estate agent? Should I pass up the opportunity? Okay, so how can they deal with a quote unquote motivated seller that already has a listed property? Um, um, well, what you would want to act now, technically, the seller has the right to counsel that agreement with the agent at any point. From my understanding, agents can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think they can counsel at any point as long as it's not a, a client that the agent referred to them and then they try to cancel and then go deal with that agent. I think, I think it's, 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 you know, within the laws or whatever, but if it's a situation where you actually dealt with the agent first and then somehow spoke to the owner, then, you know, that's a, that's an area that you don't probably a road. You don't want to probably travel, but if the owner reached out to you and the agent wasn't involved, then yeah, I, I think, you know, again, agents can correct me, but they can cancel at any point. I do know I'm pretty confident on that. It just, you can't like get the lead through an agent. I guess you do whatever you want to do. I'm just saying, I don't know if you'll be within the law on that. And then uh, you're an owner try to do a deal without the agent. You know? All right. I think, did I answer that? Did I answer it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there you go. Um, all right. This one came from Instagram from Elise to you. She said, if I have a property that I will need help to JV with, how long does it take to hear from you and your team on whether the, the deal will work for you or not? Okay, yeah, we we normally within a day, unless it's on the weekend. Normally within a day, but um, sometimes the same day. Uh, so text five zero five zero. That video will explain. I need to do a new one on this one. Yeah. All right. This one says, "Where do you get the training information, and how much does it cost?" Well, the training um, that's a paid option. And then there's a uh, a free option. You know, we're here on the freebie now. You know, my YouTube channel, you're on Instagram, but on my YouTube channel, all you do is just go over to, uh, if you're on TikTok, I don't say this enough. Some stuff I don't say enough. You need to like have like a bullet thing up there or something. Um, if you're on TikTok or Instagram, if you go to my bio, my profile, whatever you call it, there's gonna be a link there that says, tap here for free training. Literally, that's what the link is going to say. If you tap there, it takes you to my YouTube channel. Everything you need to know is right there. Now, for a lot of people, I don't know how many people. I'm, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I'm assuming thousands um, have taken, well, at least hundreds. I don't know. Thousands have succeeded, but enough. Um, have taken that free information and ran with, and I've never even talked to them before. That's how much of, that's how much a mountain of information is there that you have more than enough there to, to make it happen. Now, for some people, that's not fast enough, and they want a more step-by-step -step approach, and they can learn it in a couple of days. Well, I do offer that as a paid option. You can go to um, flipmasterclass.com and, um, and, and, and get ready to be upsold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's being real. All right. This one says, do you have to take pictures of the inside of the houses? That came from TikTok. Um, ideally, do you have to take pictures of the inside of a house? Ideally, yes. Uh, that could be very valuable and a time saver for you and any interested wholesalers, other wholesalers and or investors. Uh, those pictures, photos can be uh, uh, marketed through, you know, different avenues such as Facebook Marketplace, Facebook group, Craigslist, your social media. Uh, so that's an opportunity to market your deal, you know, with photos. So it won't, you, you save everybody a lot of time. All right. This one came from Gentoya Lee on YouTube. She said, if I close my first deal, will you help me from there? Uh, Gentoya, I love that name. 
they don't want a boy, didn't they? Uh, <laughs> that's what I told Ken the first time I met her. She was like, no, my daddy's name was John. <laughs> you know, something like that, Charles or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, John Toya, I think Jessica and I are saying that correctly. Um, if you close your first deal, guess what, darling? You probably won't need me. Yeah. You, you good. figured it out. You good. You, you're gonna be good. Now, in uh from the movie penitentiary, I don't turn down nothing but my collar. I don't know why y'all asked. <laughs> All right. We got someone in the gator room. The gator room. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna take they, this. They did the VIP thing. Oh. Yeah, text the word gator. Gator out short for alligator. If you want to um, move to the front of the line, get treat, treated like you're in the VIP line at the Flam Flamingo Terrace, and uh, you get pushed to the front of the line. What is the Flamingo Terrace? Uh, Atmore, Alabama. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, we called to you. What are you looking? What's happening? <laughs> I'm good. This is actually my second time making it on here. So yeah, okay. but anyway, I have a question about dialers. So I have a big list of people to call. Um, and I want to know what's the best dialer to use because calling one by one seems very daunting. Oh yeah, that's a tough, that's a tough way to go when you just send that boop, 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 boop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a dialer can speed up that process and make it a lot more efficient for you. When you say you have a big list, define big list. Uh, well, I have a mentor, a local mentor investor. She sent me a like this big list of pre foreclosures to call. Um, okay. So uh, yeah. Okay, so um, I use uh, we use Batch Dollar in house. Let me just say that. Um, if you text me, um, I will gladly send you the link for uh, my referral and the uh, offer that they'll make you. I think they have a promo, promo going on. But if you text me, I'll gladly send you that link. Plus, we'll also get someone to onboard you, meaning to train you on how to use it. On okay, so text it to the same number I text Gary Yeah, just text it to 205-964-5243. And uh, just put in their uh, dialer and um, okay. and I'll I'll send you back their information. Great, yeah. Well, what market are you in? Dallas, Texas. It seems very highly competitive. Uh, I quit my career after eighteen years at the end of last year. Oh wow! Okay. Um, as a mortgage underwriter, yeah. So, um, are you in it? Yeah, and I'm a licensed realtor too, but this market is so crazy. I'm like, I think I just want to stick with wholesaling right now to and just get that down and you know build some capital. Hey, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, you can make it happen if you've done the mortgage thing. You could just a bit breeze for you. Just got to get them leads up. Yes, thank you. All right, no problem at all. I'm glad you joined us. Thank you. I've been watching your videos, so let's get it. All right, all right. <laughs> all right let's get it. <laughs> love it, love it. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, this one says, how do you talk someone out of not going with a realtor to sell their property? Um, how do you talk someone out of going with a realtor to sell their property? La la, Lush. Luciani. 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 Okay. All right. All right. La la. La la land. Okay. That's what's up. All right. So, um, well, you know, I love to say la la land. Um, I'm assuming that the, the, the realtor has mentioned, uh, is, she, is she saying that they mentioned that they're going to deal with an agent or she's just assuming that why would they deal with you instead of an agent? I guess so. Yeah, why would they be, deal with you? Yeah. Okay. Be. Okay, so a lot of times people don't want to deal with an agent because they want speed. And when they think about dealing with an agent, or the, or most people think about it, speed is not the, the option, right? And some people don't want to deal with an agent because they don't want 
the uh, the trouble of continuously showing it or making it accessible for people to show. Now they'll do that with you sometimes too, as you know, host health. But so those are going to be the main two reasons. Um, and then sometimes they just don't want. They just seem like it's more of a house law process to deal with an agent versus someone coming in like uh, yourself or me. Will you whoop out my one page contract or whatever? Or you send it to them by email, which I, you know, through DocuSign or one of those services. And it, we just simplify the process for them because they're not really concerned, again, at maximizing as much as they can get for it. It's more about can I get this much money this fast? That's more important to them. So speed normally is the reason why. Less of a hassle. In most cases, not always, in most cases. See. All right. This one says, how do you assign beneficial interest in a land trust? How do you assign beneficial interest in a land trust? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just a document titled what you just said. Um, I've never done a transaction like that before. But um, it just sounds like a regular assignment of interest of contract. Let's see. I got a few on TikTok. Um, this one says, I have a few killer deals. Can we partner? In, the, in my uh, uh, friend south of the border, C, in their language, C, yes. Text 5050 in this video will explain. That's for houses. And for uh, self storage and mini storage, takes units. All right. Um, this one asks, how do you find the properties? How do you find the properties? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. There's a number of ways that you find properties. Um, you're going to market your butt off. Um, some of the common ways that we talk about here constantly, um, you can wholesale other wholesalers' properties. You can let them be the actual avenue on how uh, deals, uh, they've done the hard work to find a deal, you're just gonna place a buyer with them. You can could, you could form for your own deals uh, through driving for dollars, door knocking, bandit signs, direct mail, cold calling, text messaging, Facebook ads, Google ads, TikTok ads, Instagram ads. Um, I think I covered it all. Oh, I'm sure some other stuff, but yeah. All right. This one says, do you have people on your team to walk a person through the process in real time? In real time? Mm -hmm. um, I guess like as they going through it, the motions, like. Well, technically, that's what I offer. Right. You know, you deal directly with me. You know, there's a, a freight for it, but yeah, I offer it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Huh? Don't say that. That's so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one says, how do you prevent litigation if you can't find an investor within the stated time frame? Basically, how do you handle a disgruntled sellers who were put under contract? Well, the contract is the is the remedy. They signed it. If you use the mind, they signed an agreement saying that if I don't buy it, the earnest money is going to sell of the agreement if it gets beyond my inspection period or due diligence period. Now, there are always attorneys out there will take someone's money because they've gotten emotional about something, knowing they're not don't can't win if you fight them. Uh, so there's going to always be attorneys out there. You can't stop someone from suing you. Uh, you can prevent them from winning, but you can't prevent someone from bringing a lawsuit, whether it's legitimate or not. You know, you just make sure you're on the right side of the law. Mm -hmm. All right. This one says, do I need an LLC? Um, you don't need one to start, but at some point you do need to uh, establish one. Um, you need to establish one because you are running, or you establish some form of an entity. And an LLC will be an example uh, because you are running an actual business. All right. Um, this one says, what are some lead generation systems that you use? Um, I'm not saying you need marketing. 
<laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'm over here. This game. I know what's going down now. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, she just asked about the LLC. You ain't write that down. No. We know how many clips of that we got. <laughs> Thank you. I might answer it better. You ain't. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I might answer it better. Yeah. My, my, my response may, some days I don't have the energy that I do on other days. What's the question? We still what up? go through it, you know, so she watch it on the frame. But she'll me. skip over that if it's not marked. Oh. No, she won't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what are some lead generation systems to use? All right. Um, well, uh, we use batch leads, we use batch dialer, we use uh, batch driven, we use prop stream. Now you can access, access those through my site, digulator.com to get some discounts and additional training if you sign up through my site, which is on my shirt here. Can't see it, can't see it, can't see it, can't see it. Oh wait, let me take some of this stuff down. Yeah. Oh, the pillar in the way too. Got but anyway, um, dailylater.com, right? Now you know what. Okay. Man, you, can't, you can't care without it? Doing too much. Doing too much. Trying to be the talent and everything else. Props. <laughs> oh, the mics. Props, mic, light. Yeah, the light keep going. I, I tried. It's when you sit back. I see. Ooh, um, okay. <laughs> this one says I'm gonna try my first mobile home land deal. Moving a mobile home 37 miles from a park to land, if my calculations are correct, this should net 85k profit. Might have another three percent for the footman. <laughs> Okay. What you just gonna give me three percent? What are you saying? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's twenty four twenty. What that is? Uh, what's that about twenty twenty five five? Well, it ain't nothing. How much is that? Eighty five times three percent. Twenty five nine. What? Wait a minute. I mean twenty nine hundred. Yeah, 85k times 3%, I think it's 2,900. I'm just trying to do it off the top of my head. Oh, oh, well, you know, iPhone. Don't worry. Well, you don't want to get 2550. My bad. I was right. Mm -hmm. I said 29. 2550, I'll take that. So, what? Make that happen, man. <laughs> sure, you can't sell it for 110. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, something around here. All right. Um, this one says, do I have to be in your program to work with you on deals? Do I have to be in your oh, program to work with you on deals? You're doing a lot today. <laughs> All right. I'm a, I'm a loose thread here came from a teacher. I'm glad they come from a little shirt. I need some new shirts. Um, just text 5050 to 205-964-5243. That video will explain. All right. Um, this one says they have a vacant trailer home. The owner passed away. Mm. The family doesn't want it. They live out of state and mm. they want to do a quick sale for cash. Mm. The park owns the land, but not the trailer. You think that's a good deal for them? I guess they just need to talk about the numbers. Yeah, they need to know what the uh, price is on the mobile home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this one says, how can I find out how much my land is worth? Mm, you would have to just get an appraisal if you want to get an exact or close to an exact number. Okay, let's see. This one says, it came from Trey Howard on YouTube. They said, how can I get a pre-foreclosure and delinquent property tax list? Uh, how can you get a pre-foreclosure list? Um, if you text the word list to the number, I don't have a card up here for it, which is amazing, Asana. Uh, list, L-I-S-T, to the number. That video will show you how to build um, both lists, actually. <laughs> hmm? You say what? I'm in trouble today. my name.
All right, this one says, yesterday you were mentioning the civil engineers, how to communicate, um, like what do they need to do? Oh, that? the civil engineer? Maybe. Um, hit me up, man. Um, uh -oh. um, <laughs> text me. Forget about the, the word there, just text me. And then I'll get another number to where we can communicate, where we can talk. All right, let's Please, see. sir. Please, Mr. What that name was, Solomon? Mm hmm. Let me make a note of that. All right. This one says Do you have a text script for batch leads to set up the outgoing text messages? What was his last name? Uh, what was his name? Solomon? Al Sawat. A L S. How do you spell the first name? Suleiman Al Sawat. I'm just going to put it back up here. Okay. Yeah. That's my. Okay. Oh, I know he has in there. Sounds Arabic. I know. That's what I'm talking about. Why are you eating? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my boy, at the deal. But now ain't like that. Numbers. <laughs> no, it's stuff. His name made Tyrone Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you ignorant? <laughs> I, I know you know what time it is. Hey, make some money. So, how do you say it? Solomon. You yeah. So, what was the next question? Um, <laughs> let me read the note. Um, do you have text scripts for Bashley to set up the outgoing text message? Uh, Miss Sarah, uh, that's where the onboarding would uh, help with you with that. Um, if you text me, I'll send you the link where you can set up an onboarding with one of their uh, team members. Let them know how Wom sent you. Hi, Rob. All right, Malcolm Jamal from YouTube said, yeah, "What's my up?" Boy. What's up, footman and ladies? Just got my second house under contract. Yay! He said uh, he's yay. headed to put a lockbox on it now. Thank you for all you do. Oh, yeah, that's my man Malcolm. If you want to see his interview, I still got it under the uh, he made fifteen thousand dollars with a ten dollar earnest money deposit. Look at God. Uh, in Mobile, Alabama, close to my hometown. Uh, text the word dope, uh, to D O E, and you can see that video now. I think it's still loaded. And uh, close it in 11 days, mm -hmm. driving for dollars, $10 earnest money. Like that's as real as it gets in this business. That's as real as it gets in this business. How, how, what we said the uh, return on investment on that was? It was exponentially great. It was, yeah, it was so ignorant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up. Uh, but yeah, so uh, uh, he was just saying hello. Yeah, so what's up, man? Mm -hmm. uh, the boom boom is, has started in Mobile. I don't know what that is, do you? I don't, but you're gonna tell us. The Mardi Gras. They call oh, it the boom okay. boom. That's what they call it. Yeah, they call it the boom boom. Okay. Tell them to confirm or deny. All right. Well, answer the men's question. I did. Yeah, ask no question. Hey, yeah, we're saying what's up. Um, this one says, "Hey, Flip Man and Flip Team, I hope all is well. Let's say you got your first deal under contract with the seller. Would you recommend using Craigslist, Facebook?" marketplace etc to find a buyer yeah you uh, all of them yes sir all of them all of the above yes mm -hmm. sir most definitely all right um this one says there's an owner here in cali with a house arv of uh 408 but he is twenty thousand dollars in the hole with the county of sacramento it's a duplex built in 1973 is this a good deal how much how much you want for it he uh, I don't know how much he want for it, and then is it in good condition? Okay, so he says that it's a property in um, Sacramento, mm -hmm. right? Uh, is for what does it mean? ARV is oh, he said ARV is four way, but he's twenty thousand whole. Uh, well, you're giving us the ARV, uh, Mr. Carter, but you're not giving us a price. Yeah, uh, condition would matter also. Mm -hmm. uh, we would need a, a few more of those factors. Uh, to be able to have a, to be able to provide a decent answer for you. Well, do we need Kevin? Maybe you can try to do. What? Oh yeah. Oh, my good. Um, well, it's sort of difficult. It's a little different on duplexes, but you still can. It, it's different, but this will still help. It, it'll get them in the right frame of mind. Um, text the letters GD to help you understand what's a great deal. The way the most. Wholesalers fail because they don't can't recognize what a great deal is. This video will help. 
And uh, by the way, my man Malcolm in, in Mobile on that deal, his return on investment on $10 investment, he made $15,000. The ROI, which means return on investment, a very important phrase or term, means how much you spent and what did I, what did I, what, what was the percentage on my return in 11 days? A hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred percent. That's nasty. That's like that's like seven days on the bridge, nasty. Mm, that's a testimony. <laughs> that's nasty. I'll be right up in church crying. All right. This one says, how do I go about getting probate leave from local clerks of court? Well, uh, one of the ways you can get probate leads is you can text the word LIST, L-I-S-T, to the number. And in that video, I show you how to build that list along with a lot of other different lists. But if you want to go the route of the courthouse, it's going to depend on your courthouse. Sometimes they may make it readily, readily available in a list, and then you may just say, hey, it's in that cabinet right there, or it's at that terminal right there, and you just have to go literally search each one of them yourself. So it's just going to depend on how user friendly that particular county makes that information available to the public. You know, so hopefully you can get it done free in a matter of minutes. If you can't, text the word list, L I S T, to the number. We got to get a card with that the second time I remember that. So we got to get a card tomorrow. Okay. L I S T, yeah. All right. Um, this one says, hmm, I thought I had it. Okay, can you get the information about the pre foreclosure list again? Oh, yeah, text the word list. Mm -hmm. And um, that video will um, explain how to build that type of list and uh, quite a few others. All right, this one says, How do I join your group and how much do I need to join since I get paid tomorrow? Ah, that's what's up. What, um, what group? You mean like training? I believe so. Okay, so let me just say this. I like okay. to make sure we all, you're on Instagram, you're on TikTok. If you go to my bio or profile, whatever you want to call it, um, and, and uh, tap the link that says tap here for free training, that's really where the free training is at, right there on my YouTube channel. It'll be an introductional video to explain the entire process. And then it'll be a playlist of other videos, but you're just on a small portion of what's there. So I like to make it clear that the information is free. Now, if you're talking about actually dealing with me as for it being coached, or then you know, that's a different ball game. Um, if you just text me and say, hey, what's your coaching prices? I'll gladly sing it. I don't want to quote them here because they'll change. And once you put stuff on record, people want to hold you to it. Or whatever so we'll just put it out there it's an imaginary number but no but just text me and we'll we'll go from there anything else i should have added imaginary number i squared all right um this one says would you flip a triple n lease if a broker has the building mm, if if you have a tenant if you have a, 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 a regional or national tenant signed up for 10, 15 year triple net lease, yeah. If, if you've done the hard part, yeah, I'd be glad to step in and try to provide a buyer for you. Today and every day like it. All right, this one says, what's up, Footman? Can you go over that repair hack for the houses if they're livable and not livable? Well, I have a calculator that you can access, and I don't have a code set, but it's RC um, uh, to get access to it. But I have a calculator on my site, digulator.com, that's free. But if it's not livable, I ain't got the code set, so I ain't really going with it. Um, I did tell the keyword. Um, if it's not livable, this, these are general data here now. Sometimes you just make adjustments, but normally this will work. You just need a general idea. If it's not livable, multiply the square footage times $40. If it is livable, $25 times the square footage. 
I got that from a guy on YouTube. I got it somewhere on my phone, but uh, it was some brilliant stuff. He actually explained it better than what I'm explaining, but I'm just giving you the, the simplicity of it. So. All right. This one says, how do I get a proof of funds letter when I'm trying to wholesale? Hello from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. How do they get a proof of funds if you're trying to wholesale? Uh, Anthony Salters. Mr. Salters, technically, you don't need proof of funds to wholesale. Oh, that like got ugly. You don't need proof of funds to wholesale real estate. The only time you really need proof of funds is when you're dealing with a real estate agent. They're going to require it in most cases. Another wholesaler, some of them will be that fancy, and or, and, or you're dealing with an investor that's the owner, right? But if you're just dealing with Joe the seller, sell, Joe the, the motivated seller, just a regular person, they're not going to ask for proof of funds. If you did, if you talk to ten motivated sellers, not just ten people who want to sell a piece of real estate, but ten motivated sellers, I mean, they're going to give you the price that makes the deal work for you. Nine point out of ten, nine point nine seven percent of them are not going to ask for proof of funds. All right. Um, but if you just got to have it, I offer it. Text, um, text me and say proof of funds. Um, it, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm affiliated with a service that offers it, so it's not free. You know, my, my, my training is free, but some of the stuff I, I mentioned now is not free. I try to steer you to all the free stuff because it's hard to be free. That's when it's knowledge. It's, mm -hmm. it's like uh, has an infinite return, possible return on it. Can't even put a math problem together on something that costs you nothing and you make money on it. There's no, there's no number in it, right? It's infinite, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this one says, do you recommend leaving a voicemail when cold calling? And how often should you follow up to be persistent but not harassing anyone? Um, well, you know, you have your, your, your ringless voicemail. That's basically the same thing. Um, I would, if you, if you, if you're, depending on what you're using, it'll know if you called the person before, it'll identify you've called the person before. And a lot of them have a, have an automatic, uh, option in there where you can drop a voicemail where you don't have to literally leave the voicemail. But say if you're manually doing it without a dollar, then, um, uh, that that could tie more of your time if you're just literally just hand dialing. But if you're only doing a few of them, yeah, leave a message. You know, it it, it doesn't hurt anything. That that gives you a good warm opening when you call them back and they do answer the phone, or they may call you back. They just may have the console. It's sort of a warm opening because they responded back to your message. So, all right. Um, let's see. This one says I saw a commercial building that was burnt in California. Would that be good to wholesale? There's no way to know that. Um, no way to know that. Number one, do they want to sell? What's the price? What was its previous use? What is it zoned for? What's next door to it? What's across the street? What's the square footage of the lot? You know, all of that will factor in. There's just no way to answer that. All right. This one came from TikTok. Um, they said, what's the best way for a person to get into flipping without experience? Um, to flipping, um, now you, are you talking about wholesaling or flipping? Wholesaling is a form of flipping. So we're talking about wholesaling real estate where your cash or credit is not used to make money. So to answer that question, take advantage of, go to my, if you're on my live right now, you can wait till we're over though. Whenever we finish, just simply go to, um, what, what I said? Oh, go to my profile in my uh, bio and tap the link there. That says tap here for free training. That's the name of the website. Tap for here, tap here for free and that'll take you to my YouTube channel. And it's all there. Eight years. I'm sorry, 13 years, over 800 videos to date. Not saying that you're gonna have to go through all 800 videos, but you'll get there. You know, you may have to only do eight of them and get it. Who knows? Everybody retains information differently. Oh, it's time for the topic before. Um, for Oksana explodes. Um, so the topic for today, is there too much competition in your city for wholesaling real estate? All right, if you like the logo, I mean the thumbnail. Like this video. 
Well, like the video first, whether you, whether you like it or not. <laughs> but if you like, in the comments, put 100 if you like it. And we're going to go with the, what, what emoji we can use today? I said the devil yesterday. Um, let's go with the um, the gator emoji if you don't like it. There's a gay, a gay alligator emoji. Uh, should be on most of y'all's phone. It's a green look, hook look, look like that. Anyway, so um, is there too much competition in your city for wholesale and real estate? We often hear that. And I saw the went off on a little di diatribe yesterday when someone from New York City said that he wanted to wholesale in another market because there was too much competition in New York. New York City. 20 million people, metro, metropolitan, greater area, New York City. It is not possible for it to be too much competition. But if we'll just use, I don't know, uh, I'm trying to think of a town, uh, Opelika, Alabama, it could be too much competition there, right? Mm -hmm. Even though Opelika and Auburn sort of butt up against each other, Google it if you don't know it. I'm just trying to give you a geography lesson today. Um, Maybe 100,000 people in both towns combined, maybe. That includes students. Um, it could possibly be, it could, it, it, it could be a situation created where it may be too much. It's only going to be so much real estate to go around, right? But if you're in, even Birmingham is a, a I would say we're not even a medium-sized city. We're probably a little less than that. Well, we're probably medium-sized. We're probably a million, like one, one, one point one. Metro, right? You know, it could never be too much competition. Air, you know, it is there's just too many people that you can tap in, too many people that own real estate that you can tap into. So generally speaking, if you're in a market of about 250,000 metropolitan greater area, you're normally in a good sized city that even though you may see the competition, you all may occasionally bump into each other on deals. Normally you can eat pretty well in a market like that. Right. But in these large cities like Dallas, Texas, Houston, um, Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, New York City, Washington, D.C., or the DMV area, Miami, Jacksonville, Tampa, uh, Orlando, uh, Los Angeles, uh, San Diego, San Francisco. Oakland, uh, Denver, San Antonio, Austin, Texas, um, what am I, Minneapolis, uh, Milwaukee, I said Birmingham, Memphis, Atlanta, I didn't even say Atlanta, Atlanta, uh, even Columbus, Georgia is big enough, um, Pensacola, I'm, I'm just going through some cities in the top of my head, um, I said Houston, um, what am I missing? Um, Huntsville, I said Jacksonville. Uh, Tuscaloosa. Tuc uh, it's sort of, it's still it's be a small, little tough. It's, it's a little tough down there because I, you know, I, trust me, I did some deals down there, but it, it's, it's tough, a little tough. That, Maybe it, that's, on the, that's on the fridge area. Maybe but even Jackson, Mississippi North is going to be big enough, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so you all can sort of look at some of those cities <laughs> and you're going to probably match up in some form or fashion, or you may be near one. Now, sometimes you're a couple, three hours away from a city, any city of that size. All right, now, if that's the situation, and you're in a small town, and you're three, four hours away from any city of any decent size, okay, now we got some issues, right? So you may have to change focus on what you're targeting and the area that you're targeting. That's why I throw up these signs like this all the time, is these units because now you have to start maybe looking at self-storage or maybe multifamily because even though those opportunities won't be as vast as they are in these larger markets, now you can spread out over maybe multiple counties that you already may be familiar with, but even though you're in a rural area. Like where I'm from, um, we have to travel. Why where, where I grew up, not, I live in Birmingham, I've been in Birmingham 32 years, uh, but where I grew up, we have to travel to do everything for the most part. You know, we got a Dollar General in town, you know, that's gonna serve us only just so much, right? In a grocery store that probably doesn't really need to be open. 
Um, but, you know, you want to do any serious shopping or you want to go see a doctor or something, we have to drive a lot of times at least an hour, you know, to do those, an hour and a half to see if, like there's something really wrong with you mm-hmm. or whatever. So, um, so if you're in one of those situations, so now you may have to look at real estate a little differently and you may go to different counties or other small towns within your county to get what you're trying to, to, to make happen. So, but in these larger cities like that I named, no, man, <laughs> the, the, the business there. You know, forget about the comment. If, if you can see the competition, guess what that means? They making money. You know what I'm saying? People, uh, uh, Matt, uh, the best example I can give you, we, small town or large town, we know of the, this company called McDonald's, right? When you're in, even when you're in a market where you, you may have a 700 Mac, it might not be that many, but you may have 100 McDonald's in that market. Yeah. You still know mom and pop operations that get down just as hard as they do. And that's a national brand, right? That you still know mom and pop hamburger joints that are just as busy as they are. Hamburger heaven. That's what I'm talking about. Just as busy as they are. <laughs> the money is out there. Period. And when you're in these large markets like that, then no such thing as too much competition. No such thing. Number one, everybody ain't gonna succeed. That's the first thing. Just because you it appear people doing are doing something, don't ever mean everybody making money. You know, so that's what remember that if I don't teach you anything else, right? So to answer your question, no, if you're in a decent sized city, is there too much competition in your city? The answer is no, if you're in a decent sized city. But don't let that stop you if you're in a smaller market because there's some other things you can do. Boom. That's all Boom. I gotta say about that. All right, let's get back to it. Um, this one says, why do we need to use a social security number with your one page contract? Well, technically you well, you don't. I, I say it in the if you watch the video, I say you don't have to use it. And I think the most recent video I did the other day to update the contract, you know, information or whatever, I said I really just need to remove that. And I may get my uh, programmer to remove it. All right. I did. Mm -hmm. Um, This one says, do you even do deals anymore? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Send me one and see what happens. (laughs) Ting. All right. This one says, do you remember your first wholesale? If so, were were you nervous when you first spoke to the seller? And can you kind of walk us through that process up to the close? This is your one story. Well, this is all related to the business. But this is one story. Story, story is when it has nothing to do with real estate. Okay. That's the definition of a story. We had 57 minutes. But, I'm not, but I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna give him the long version. Going he asked me up to he asked me how mm-hmm. I got started. He asked me about the actual deal. So I can just go right into the deal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, can I say, can I at least start how I found the deal? Yes. We've already been talking about Okay, so how I found the deal was I, I, I had bought a course, and what I got out of the course was three things that I understood and I thought I was going to pursue. It was wholesaling, lease options, and I knew banded signs was a way to generate leads. So this Walmart here near, near where we are right now has just opened on uh, John Hopkins Pop Parkway, whatever it's called, or Highway 150 here in, Bur- in Hoover, a suburb of Birmingham. And it had just opened. And, you know, in the front of Walmart, they had a little thing, the nails and the eye pl- places, mm-hmm. so they leased space in the front of the store. And this company had a sign shop in there. So I didn't, I had never bought any any signs or whatever, so I didn't know what they cost. So I went in there and, and uh, bought 50 signs and spent $250, drastically overpaid. You know, it was a sacrifice, but I was that confident I could do this. I picked them up on a Friday, all right, and I put them all out on a Sunday, which is, I don't recommend put them all out, especially your first time. But I put them all out on a Sunday morning, 50 signs. I think it took me several hours because it's the first time I did it. The very first two calls I received were deals. One of them was a lease option deal. The other one was a wholesale deal. The lease option deal, I'm not going to get into it. Long story short, lady gave me a $5,000 deposit. It blew up in my face, had to give her the money back, right? I could have quit then. I did some bull. 
but I didn't. <laughs> and so because I had the other deal pending, it was these two sisters inherited a property. I had two, 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 two forms of motivated sellers going there. A property obtained through inheritance and tired landlords. Like a lot of people, mom passed, had a lot of memories in the house. We're not selling mama house, blah, blah, blah. We'll rent it out. What's the name? Them need to stay somewhere. You know, they say they'll pay us. After going through that about five years of family members renting the property out and non-family members renting the property from them and not paying them, guess what? They were tired landlords now, right? Two sisters over in Titties. I wonder if those two ladies still alive. And so um, some of that stuff I just want to know. Uh, but anyway, so I showed up at their house. I met, I met them. Let me see. Did I go see the house? I think I think she made me. I, let me see. I think they gave me access to property. I don't remember meeting them at the house. I think what they what I did was I think I went and put it on a contract first and then viewed it. We agreed on a price of twenty thousand dollars. I didn't know what the ARV was for real. I just thought it was a good deal. I didn't even know. I, I didn't know. And so um i i showed up and this was 2003 i showed up in my 1985 convertible toyota celica gts almost a 20 year old vehicle it looked good to me you know <laughs> but you know whatever and so when they actually thought i had the money with me i was like no nah, it doesn't work that way you know, they thought I, when I was meeting them at her house, her and her sister, one of the, one of the sisters at, at her house to sign the paperwork, they thought I was going to actually have the 20 cash with me. I think, no, nah, it didn't work that way. It's a process, blah, 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 take 30 days or whatever. So, okay, so they signed. They was cool with that. Now, then they showed me the house. And then, you know, so um, I think that's how it went. I, I actually don't remember that part of it. And so I marketed it in the newspaper when newspapers were a thing. I know a lot of you youngsters don't even know what that is right now uh, or heard about it. So you would market your properties. That's one way to do it. It was actually back then, it was you would get more attention by putting your deals in the newspaper than you would on the internet because there wasn't a lot of places to post them on the internet. I don't think Craigslist was a big thing back then. I may be wrong, but I'd have to look it up. But I know I didn't post it there. And so I got a call from this realtor. And I put it in the paper for $25,000. And the realtor said, yeah, I got a buyer for it, man. He'll buy it, you know, close as soon as we can get a clear title. He said, uh, so I, I told him, I don't know how he got it out of me. I just probably volunteered that I had it under contract with the seller. For, so I had to explain what it was because he was a real estate agent. I thought, well, I got it under contract, man. I'm some wholesaler. He said, uh, well, what do you got? He asked me what he got in the contract for. I told him. He said, well, in order for me to do this deal and well, get my buyer to buy it, um, I'm gonna need 2,500 of that 5,000. I said, okay, you know? And so I met, um, I met both of the guys um, uh, in the Summit parking lot and I signed the contract. And uh, when I met them, you know, they just had, either they were going to work out or they were uh, finishing working out. They were just in some, uh, some flip flops, shorts. And uh, even if that was in, was that the mark? That was in February, but they were dressed like that. It was like, like now, you know, like a warm day like today in February. And so, um, so you know, the girl I was dating at the time, okay, so they signed a contract and said, well, we'll contact you and let you know when or blah, blah, blah. So they contacted me. And so when we had a closing day set, and she was like, you don't think you need to wear a suit? I was like, no, nah, not the way these guys were dressed. When I seen them, I don't think, you know, I don't think that would be, um, in line with what's about to go on here, you know. So we met over, we closed over at a, an attorney over in Trustville. And well, so the sellers were there, the two sisters were there, the buyer and his real estate agent, and me. And so they signed off on everything. Uh, they passed the sellers their money, passed me my $2,500 check. And so, you know, I had, you know, they, because I had to keep in contact with the sellers and, you know, to get access for the buyers and all that stuff. And so we started to build some rapport or whatever. And, you know, they, they were excited for me. They say, Taylor, how much? You know, they just called me by my last name. Taylor, how much you get? And I showed it to them. 
I said, they, they said, you did good. You did good. So that was my first deal. Boom. All right. That was too long. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I can't win. The next question says, is there an option on PropStream to see uh, distressed properties? Also, is a property that's under construction considered a distressed property? Um, okay. Allow me to answer your second question first. Mm -hmm. uh, a property that's under construction is not, in most cases, a distressed property. They just, <laughs> just it up. they um, when he says under construction, uh, I, I'm assuming he means a renovation. Mm -hmm. Okay, instead of a new construction. Uh, normally, somebody's investing. Most people get in over the hedge, and it may present an opportunity. And then the, they said, "Does prop string?" Well, yeah, that's what the it'll provide a list the, of different types of. Uh, people that own real estate, as far as their situation, that may be more highly uh, motivated to sell cheap. So, yeah, you just text the word list, and that video will explain how to build those lists. Now, explain what a distressed property is. Um, that can mean a lot of different things. Normal people, when they define distressed properties, it's, it's the condition of it or whatever. You know, distressed properties is a target, but we're looking more so for motivated sellers, no matter what their reason is. It may not be anything wrong with the property that the seller is motivated, you know, to sell it cheap enough based on the ARV the condition and so on. We're looking more for motivated sellers. And sometimes the cost of property is in the need of repair may be the reason they would sell it cheap. But mainly you're looking for motivated sellers. Mm -hmm. um, does PropStream have an option to see just distressed property? Well, uh, again, um, <laughs> You're building lists. You can't like identify hey, this house needs a roof or this house been fired. It doesn't have lists like that. I don't, I don't know what he means by that. Um, again, you, you're targeting more so motivated sellers. And because of the condition of the property, sometimes that may be their motivation. Okay. But they may be motivated because they're going through a divorce. They may be motivated because of a death or income loss. Again, the property may be. You know, just need paint. It may not need anything or whatever. So that's why I'm saying, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It, it's going to allow you to build all those type of lists or whatever. So you're looking for motivated sellers, no matter what the condition of the property is. All right. This one says, should your numbers break down be based on the asking price or the ARV? Oh, wait. That question said, when calculating my numbers, what's the best way to estimate the rehab and should that be based on the asking price or the ARV? Well, the re the, the, the uh, repair cost is going to be part of how you determine if you have an opportunity or not. Uh, so it's really a combination of things that you'll put together. This video right here, you text GD, will break all of that down for you. What, what makes a great deal? So, uh, but we've been rolling pretty hard. I got this thing at six, so. Um, Whew, uh, got a lot of information out today. Um, hopefully everyone um, got the questions answered, but if you didn't, make sure you post them in the comment section of any of my YouTube videos, and I answer those on a daily basis. Um, these do go in replay mode on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Um, I don't know about Twitter and Twitch, but they go into replay mode, so you can watch them again. The best experience is on YouTube. So with that being said, we're going to go old school, Jessica. Okay. You gonna let me do it right? Let's there. get it. All right, y'all. Bye. Flip man, flip man. It's the flip man. Flip man, flip man. You want some money in your hand? In your hand. Flipping houses without credit or your cash. cash.